So I was in Exeter the other day, and I went into uh, a, a dealer called uh, Michael Spires, near, near the cathedral, on a cathedral square. Very nice, very picturesque, and independent. And, you know, they had uh, Amigas in there, Tag Heuer, Rolex, a Rolex dealer, and also Protect didn't have Protect at that particular branch, but they do, do stop. So walking past the window, um, it wasn't deliberately, uh, actually it was deliberately, we'd been to something to eat and I thought, oh, let's just walk past the window. The wife was like, yeah, whatever. <laughs> and um, I saw they had one of the new uh, Amiga Speedmaster chronoscopes in the window. So I thought, oh, let's go in. So me and number one son, we go in, my good half, Mrs. English Watch, and my mother, they went and did some shopping, which is fine, left us to it. So in we went. Now... I'm going to talk about these watches um, in terms of my initial emotion, my initial reaction, uh, not necessarily in terms of the precision of you know, the specification or the materials. So this is about pure off the street, uh, showroom appeal, you know, instant, what, how does it make you feel? So that, that's what I'm trying to, trying to achieve here. So uh, before we do that, I'm just going to show you, I'm wearing my um, Planet Ocean today uh, on the bracelet which uh, is unusual. I just felt, um, yeah, I need some, some time with the Planet Ocean. And normally I put it on the bracelet, I think, God, it's a bit heavy. But um, it's been fine. Yeah, enjoying it. Good stuff. Anyway, I'm Andy. Welcome to the English Watch. This channel is about me and my watch collecting journey. Looking behind the watch for the story and trying to help like-minded individuals like you start your watch collecting journey. Now if you like this video please give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe. Please also leave any comments in the end at the bottom and I'll try and get back to them. Okay, first one. Hmm. I need that. Right, I've got the details up on the iPad and I'll uh, I'll flash the graphics up on the screen so you don't have to read this but I'm going to read this. So we tried the, the um, they call it the chronoscope, it was actually the, the, uh, the silver dial with the blueprint. Probably not the best one, which is probably why it's still in the window. Although you go on the Omega website and it says, um, out of stock, notify me. Now, when in there, the guy was really nice. Um, I say they're, they're independent. Um, he said they weren't on commission, you know, whatever. But um, I went in there, he's kicking tyres. Um, yeah, he was quite happy to, to, to accommodate me, which was, which was fantastic. And they weren't busy, so I didn't feel bad about it. Not that you should feel bad about it, because you know, these are expensive purchases. Nobody, unless you're a real baller, should go in and just drop five or six or seven thousand pounds and say, hey, I'll have one of those. One day, maybe. Anyway, so the, uh, the chronoscopes. This is the new chronoscope that was released uh, a few weeks ago. A number of iterations. You have blue dials, uh, different materials. Uh, this one was a silver dial with the blue uh, hands, blue print and blue bezel. Now it comes on the new um, sort of uh, daintier bracelet that the new professional model comes on, which you know, which, which was nice. And you know, in the hand and on the wrist, I've got a screenshot. Uh, don't, don't let me take those, do I keep forgetting? But I did actually this time. Um, it was okay, I thought it would be a bit big. Uh, I think it's a, it's a 43 mil, so it's bigger than the professional it's based on the I guess the racing um, size which has got the 9000 series movement the coaxial with the column wheel uh, which is normally automatic but in this one they've taken the uh, I guess the winding mechanism off and created a, um, a manual wind so it's a bit thinner uh, and so the back of the, the back of the movement you'll see it's got a big plate where the where the winding mechanism used to sit so anyway, on the wrist, uh, if you ignore the dial aesthetics, it sat really nicely and I was quite impressed. And yeah, that, that new bracelet does sort of disappear on you. So um, yeah, wearability, brilliant. Um, but the, the dial, for me, it was almost illegible. Uh, that, that blue on the silver, oh, I, I really struggled with it. So um, so we passed and I said to the guy at the time, I said, yeah, this one's based on the, the racing style. So um, yeah, he had a racing up yeah, behind him in the camera, so let's 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 get one of those on. So now this is a watch. When I bought the Planet Ocean, I nearly bought the Speedmaster Racing because I did like that one as well. It was a nice size, and I liked the orange, and I love the leather strap, a really supple leather strap on that one. So we stuck that one on again, and I stared at it. And I thought, hmm, I don't know. The orange 
maybe it was a bit too much now and I guess uh, maybe because I tipped over 50 and all of a sudden it was a bit maybe a bit too much fun I don't know but uh, the, the strap was still lovely uh, it's again still very wearable bigger watch it's at 44 millimeters in the case and it's a bit thicker but on that leather it's very wearable so definitely worth a look um, Omegas tend to be quite short lug to lug so even though the dials are big um, they do tend to be quite wearable and this this one was now the chronoscope was £7,000, 7400 which is, I don't know, 1500 quid more than the professional. Immediately when you say that, it's not worth it. Um, I don't know what's so special about this one, when the racing itself is 72 so for an extra, I guess, 100 qu uh, what was it? Yeah, 200 quid on the chronoscope, you're getting a, a bracelet, uh, but they're taking the automatic winding off. I don't know. So maybe it's pitched about right for that classification of watch. In this range, they call it the two counters because at the six o'clock, instead of having the um, the hours on the professional, it's got the date. So it's got uh, like a, a sort of GMT where the uh, minutes uh, counter is. So it's got minutes and hours there, and then a constant seconds at the nine o'clock, obviously with the chronograph hand in the middle. Anyway, so we tried those two on. And then caught my eye again. It was the the new Seamaster 300, so not the Diver 300M, which is the Bond watch, you know, the um, one that was replaced in 2018. This was the classic, the vintage from 1957, the 300 series, so um, under their heritage line. Now they've just replaced these uh, this year. Now I did try on a number of months ago the new Steel. And I tried it on relative to the old one, and I'd have to say that the new one felt really nice. It had the flat link bracelet, really supple, light. I think the case, even though it was bigger, it just felt smaller. So whatever they'd done, you know, chasing millimetres around the dial, it just worked so much better than the old one. So I really like that. But the one I really like is the bronze gold. Now I know it's £9,920 according to this website, but what a watch. For under 10 grand, getting a gold watch, okay, it's bronze gold, but it does have quite a high content of gold in it. And the guy did say to me, because I did ask, is this going to patina? And he's like, no, 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 it's it's got the right materials in it, so it won't patina. Mm, we'll see. It comes on a brown leather strap, which was nice, supple. The Omega straps tend to be really nice. Um, but I really like this watch. Really, really like it. I've tried it on before. And again, nine grand. I swear you could push him for a bit of discount on that one easily. Um, now, interestingly, before I get onto the last watch, as we were walking back through Exeter, uh, we happened to go into Goldsmiths, who in the shop didn't have a great deal, although they had loads in the window around the edge. But they had one of these in the counter amongst other uh, watches. They had Panerai's, so I assume that was like the used uh, watch area. But they had this exact watch that's only been out a few months for seven and a half grand and I think it's on their website when you look. So I thought, hmm. I looked at it and I thought, well that's the physical watch there, so that must be the one that's for sale. Not a mark on it, two grand or more less than the new for a few months old. So nice watch, maybe one to wait for. Um, I suspect there'll be a few more of those out there. So yeah, just watch out spending 10 grand. It's a lovely watch and I think for a celebration watch and something that, that you want to own and keep, don't worry about retail or or, or resale, should I say. Um, enjoy enjoy the moment. But yeah, that was a nice one. Right, so finally, uh, we were talking, I, I said to the guy, you know, what are people coming and ask for? And he's obviously said, yeah, Rolex. And we had a bit of a chuckle about Rolex. And uh, he, he then talked talking about uh, that they, they do Patek Philippe. I said, oh, okay, that's nice. He goes, oh, um, we do Patek, I think it was the Truro branch or uh, something like that. And he says, oh, we've got one in. Um, it was a 5930G. And he said that as though, I know what that is. Um, because I'd obviously shown a, a, a thin veneer of, of knowledge of the other watches that, that, that we, we talked about. And I talked about my collection. He said, oh, do you want to try it on? I said, yeah, go for it. And it's this 5930G, so it's white gold, world time, flyback chronograph, and that's how, that's how Patek are describing it. 
Now this is a, I think it's a 39.5mm case, which felt okay, it had a nice mass to it because it was white gold. The chronograph buttons I think are a bit big. I like the uh, the world time thing, that the click it and the, 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 the cities fly around and the hour hand moves as well. Um, that was nice, but I think the dial was it's a bit fussy and a bit small. And I thought it was a bit difficult to read the time. So he said, oh, how much is this one? I said, like, I don't know, plus or minus 50K. He said it was 61, I think. Um, I said, even at 61, I said, it's not for me. We did have a bit of a chat about the uh, the Nautilus and the Aquanauts. Uh, and I, cause I did say that I liked the, I think it's the, the, the Nautilus that's got the GMT, I call it the ghost hand. It, you know, you sort of refer to it as a skeleton hand. I, I really like that feature. And he referred to those as uh, reward watches, and he was quite upfront about those watches are offered to clients that have a general interest and collection on Protect Fleet. So there was no hiding or BS around, yeah, get on a wait list. It was very much, yes, you can have one of those, but you've got to buy this white gold world time or similar. So if you've got 60K to spare um, for complications, and there's probably a few on there that I'd go for. When I like the 5396G, which is a bit like the JLC, probably get it in rose gold, 5396. Although I don't like the date at the six. Um, the JLC has the uh, date around the moon phase. Um, I know it doesn't, it has it around the circumference, doesn't it? Because it's got that jumping hand across the moon. So I think the JLC is better resolved, even though it's not uh, an annual calendar, which the protect one is. The dial looks better on the JLC. Anyway, we all like what we like, don't we? So that was it. That was my um, ramblings around Exeter. So I think it's almost time for the kids to come home and start making a noise. So I'll sign off. But if you like this video, um, please give me uh, some comments and some feedback. I'll say this was very much off the cuff. This wasn't about me issuing you with uh, expertise and knowledge. Not that I can do that anyway. This is about me and I say my watch collecting journey and just, just sampling things, you know, just trying things on because I haven't bought a pro I'm say a proper watch for two years and I am on the hunt. Um, and I, you don't do these things lightly, so go and kick the tires. Don't feel bad about you're not wasting people's time. It's like test driving a car, isn't it? You won't just go well, maybe you'll go just go and buy a car, but just keep going back, try them on, and you'll slowly hone it down, and then you'll probably change your mind anyway. Um, but also, rotate through your watches. Um, get a feel for what you've got. Maybe there's some that you don't like so much and you can move on. And I'm coming to that position now, and I'll make a video soon that will start to show my collection then, which are the ones that are starting to potentially exit the collection to enable me to get into other ones. Anyway, I'm Andy. This has been the English Watch. Take care, and I'll see you soon. Bye for now.